Wonderful, welcome. Today we're going to talk about tips on outsourcing, product mm -hmm. development and R&D. Mm -hmm. So in terms of companies that maybe are considering do it, doing it for the first time mm -hmm. or maybe like they don't have a lot of experience with working with outside product development and research and development uh, mm -hmm. companies. You have huge experience uh, in uh, industrial design, like how many years, w when did you start? I think uh, over 15 years. Over 15 years? Yes. Yeah, so you've probably worked with clients who have a ton of experience in the process of developing a new product and with companies that have a no experience yes. in developing a product. So my uh, first um, sort of impression when mm -hmm. thinking about the subject was that probably it's a, a matter of communication, mm -hmm. uh, especially when in terms of how you communicate and agree on technical aspect versus the aesthetic mm -hmm. artist sort of uh, design uh, aspect and, mm -hmm. and how you work with them. So what's your, um, th th is this something that creates some sort of confusion or is a problem in communication when it comes to, you know, a client telling you what they expect and you telling them what they can expect from you? Well, every process requires clarification so that we understand each other, that we speak the same language and that we are on the same page in terms of expectations and what yeah. is going to be delivered. So no matter if, if this is a corporate client that we are talking to or if this is um, a startup company, uh, we always try to educate them. Uh, we always try to give them some, uh, some kind of examples. What can they expect from us? So um, this basically saves us a lot of pain um, just in case there is a misunderstanding of, I don't know, certain terms of, uh, or certain stages uh, of the process. So I think this is, this is the best practice that, that we um, try to apply to our process, educate the client on the way and show them, um, give them examples what to expect at the end of the each phase. You said terms and stages mm -hmm. like so the, i think this is very important because mm -hmm. terms is one thing mm -hmm. uh, when uh, both sides might think they agree on something while in in fact they have a different perspective on a certain word or definition or or, or whatever mm -hmm. but the steps so a process mm -hmm. that's a whole different thing that is i think more relied on experience so mm -hmm. How, how do how do you take care of the the, the process side when working with uh, uh, clients? Uh, so our uh, our I, I would say good practice is um, working um, according to certain stages that the, that we developed. So every project is split into six stages, and uh, I think this is the easiest way for us to uh, apply those stages. Uh, to our clients' needs or uh, requirements. So, because different clients comes with, come with different expectations. Some want uh, the, the full package, let's say, so starting with the initial conceptual design or yeah. even uh, research phase and, um, and with the manufactured product. And some come just for, I don't know, one stage, for instance, just a conceptual design without uh, handling the mechanical design because this is something that they can do on their own. So uh, we do apply, uh, let's say, um, a process. Um, we uh, a process which is uh, split into various stages of the, uh, for uh, for the project, and if necessary, we just um, uh, we just execute uh, one of those stages depending on, on the actual scope of yeah, work. Yes, so sort of adjust to the client or adjust that's, to the project. That's right. So this process, um, is it, because uh, I imagine it's very helpful when a company with no experience in developing a new product mm -hmm. uh, comes to you and says, hey, uh, we're a startup company, uh, our team, this is something new for our team also, not, not just for the company, mm -hmm. and you uh, you know, you show them the uh, industrial design uh, process, the mm -hmm. six stages, and uh, it's a help for them. But what if a, an experienced uh, client comes to you? So, for example, someone for, from an NPD department in a large corporation mm -hmm. who is simply 
understaffed and needs something out uh, on the market or inside the company quickly and asks you for your help, mm -hmm. uh, does he also uh, need to work within that process? Is it something he might think that is totally different to a workflow that he is used to? So I don't think it depends on the, uh, let's say, client size, because even uh, larger corporate clients might have uh, zero experience with uh, uh, introducing new products to, to a market. Mm -hmm. So I would say this uh, depends uh, on actual experience of the staff members of, uh, of, uh, on, uh, on the client side. Yeah. But we are flexible, so we can adjust uh, our, let's say, process um, if they have some very specific requirements as for that. Uh, but from my experience, uh, I would say that uh, our, our process divided into those stages uh, pretty much reflects uh, on um, some, some, some standard, let's say, uh, which functions uh, uh, among different companies. So okay. there is a pretty good understanding um, uh, among those clients who, who, who do have experience uh, with uh, uh, with designing products, um, and uh, I would say I don't remember any specific uh, project which uh, with such clients that that could be problematic in that regard. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about the other way around? Let's say mm -hmm. that uh, there's this experienced engineer uh, and uh, who has his own team, mm -hmm. and he might be afraid that. Uh, uh, we, our process will not live up to his or her uh, standards. Mm -hmm. So you said that the MindSellers design process is somewhat similar to like standards mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. are globally in the industry. So if a client would expect you to um, change it in mm -hmm. some way, to mm -hmm. adapt it more to their workflow, mm -hmm. is that possible? Yes, uh, it is possible and I think um, if there are some, let's say, trust issues uh, that we, whether we will, we will be able to deliver um, specific types of, uh, um, I don't know, uh, files or a quality of, I don't, of, uh, of solids uh, modeled, then uh, there are various ways to handle this. And uh, there were projects which uh, were, um, um, overviewed by a senior engineer from uh, from our client's uh, site and obviously he was able to verify uh, and uh, well uh, accept our work so I would say there is um, there there's no there are no issues on our uh, on our side to to, to being to be transparent yeah. in terms of what we do and to also adjust to our clients needs because if they if they want to overview our work, then certainly we can show them what we are currently doing. They can review the work, they, they can uh, send their remarks. And uh, of course, if there are any uh, changes required, then sure, we will do this. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember when we were preparing to, uh, to, to have this talk, you mentioned something like that, the, uh, this industrial design process that we use. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, it's meant to sort of manage clients' expectations. Mm -hmm. Could you expand on that? I think it's based basically uh, on um, on most frequent requests from our clients because I would say uh, some clients come and they expect only um, conceptual design from us. So obviously, this is uh, this is uh, something which every industrial design studio does, and. Uh, this is the basic work that we do. But of course, there are different clients who come to us and um, they do not know exactly what they want to, to do. They have just uh, uh, some um, Id ideas about uh, their product. Uh, but this is not specific enough to, to start the project yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is also when something which we can help them with. Uh, by executing a research phase or um, um, digging deeper on, on the subject matter to, in order to um, um, come up with a s project specification or uh, a good uh, product brief, which is not always uh, something that we receive from our client. So uh, 
then uh, we have also clients who come to us and uh, they already have a conceptual model but they are not able to move to the next stage uh, which is uh, preparing this model for uh, manufacturing so, or executing a mechanical design and this is also something that we can do for them so depending on, uh, on their actual uh, needs and, uh, mm, and most frequent requests that we got from our clients uh, our process basically reflects uh, those stages or those uh, those most frequent uh, requests from our clients to handle s s uh, their product, uh, their projects uh, on, on various stages uh, of their life cycle. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, uh, my perspective mm -hmm. on the uh, on our process of design is that it also manages a client's expect expectations in the way that. Um, when a client with no experience mm -hmm. comes in mm -hmm. and says they have an idea mm -hmm. and they want us to do a shelf ready product yes. in six months, mm -hmm. uh, then the process when, when you lay, when you lay it out to the client, mm -hmm. it m makes him better aware of how the whole process works, mm -hmm. why it needs some time each stage mm -hmm. and what they can expect at the end so mm -hmm. that's how i understand also managing the client's expectations okay. that mm -hmm. yes yeah that's also correct because uh, you're absolutely right about uh, the clients who come uh, to us and have a very vague idea on the time frame uh, of designing a hardware product and this is also something that we have to do because if uh, if we see a client who, who comes to us and say and he wants a uh, shelf ready product in um, six months yeah this is something uh, well maybe not uh, totally impossible but uh, highly unrealistic because uh, depending well, uh, it's probably possible when the problem is so simple and so easy that you don't even need a design studio for it that's right, right? so uh, but if we're talking about i don't know consumer electronic any yeah. type of product so even uh, considering the tooling phase and uh, design process and testing and reviewing this this is uh, this is possible but uh, I would say you would have to have a, a team that you trust on every stage and yeah. uh, a manufacturer who is just waiting for your project to, to execute yeah. and yeah. only then but uh, other than that that's yeah, quite that's unrealistic sounds like the holy grail yes <laughs> and uh, <laughs> So we have to educate our clients and, yeah. and we have to show them that uh, specific stages take need to take some time and also and there's a reason for that there's a not that, that's it, right it's not just that you constantly work for three four six weeks yes you need to review research test yeah and also something which uh, our clients tend to forget they also need time to review and to rethink uh, things that they receive from us yeah, so on their this, side yeah. that's right they often uh, forget about this and sometimes uh, it takes weeks for our client to 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 i don't know to review our work and to come up with some feedback and um, well it definitely influences the time frame of the project as well yeah okay so um what would be the scenarios usually mm -hmm. when uh, a client uh, uh, a client that has internal capabilities mm -hmm. of doing product development and r d mm -hmm. but still they come to uh, to us mm -hmm. uh, what what may be a, re a good reason to reach out to a company mm -hmm. like ours I see a few different reasons because uh, uh, historically I can uh, point those uh, clients and uh, the reasons that they ca came to us. Uh, definitely one of the reasons is uh, that they do have engineering staff or um, en uh, hardware engineers but they lack uh, um, aesthetic designers uh, for their products. So this is something that uh, I would say is a very frequent uh, reason for uh, corporate clients uh, who can handle mechanical design on their own, who can ha handle 
uh, hardware in terms of uh, electronics, but uh, they do not have uh, staff members in their team responsible for aesthetic design. Yeah, that's actually, uh, I often heard that when talking with uh, uh, companies, uh, with people from companies at some different trade fairs mm -hmm. when it comes to industrial machinery, because mm -hmm. often an engineer that um, designed uh, the, a machine mm -hmm. also that does the aesthetics design mm -hmm. of the exterior mm -hmm. and it usually leads to the case where the company is seeking out for someone who might do a, uh, a better job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. This is definitely the case and uh, usually uh, our clients see the need because they see the limitation of their staff um, that simply, uh, well, they can do uh, they can design a great working machinery, and, but um, the aesthetic part is uh, still... Yeah, it's a different cup of tea, right? That's right. And it requires a different, different skill set, and that's why they uh, come to us for, for that purpose. Well, but that's not the only way, I guess, um, an internal team could be limited. Uh, yes. If you have an internal team, it might be simply, I don't know, overbooked. That's right. And uh, this is the second reason, because... Uh, uh, we also do have clients uh, that need, uh, well, that uh, they run their own internal projects and have no uh, means to uh, to simply uh, handle another project. And uh, this is uh, where we can uh, assist them as well. And uh, if they have a project which they can outsource, then uh, we can handle um, such project autonomically and uh, just deliver them uh, something which they expect from us. So. That's definitely another, uh, I would say, uh, reason for for reaching out to mm -hmm. an external design studio. And uh, on the same subject, even if, uh, for instance, even if we had clients which uh, uh, which ha had internal designers uh, for the specific uh, product, yeah. But imagine if you're working for such company and uh, do the same type of work for, I don't know. Uh, Five years, yeah, for five instance, years, and you're designing only the same type of product. Yeah, so this you is sort of become biased or yes. narrow visioned. You, that's right. You can, uh, you're, mm, you no longer look beyond what has been done, and your work is basically influenced uh, by your experience and your past uh, designs, maybe. So, mm. uh, in order not to eat your own tail, yeah. this is something that's. Uh, uh, I don't know. A client wants to, I don't know, bring fresh blood, let's say, to the yeah. team and uh, a fresh view. Yeah. That's right. And uh, this is uh, also something uh, which we can assist them. I with. totally understand. I, I remember talking to a guy once. Uh, he was a uh, a 3D uh, graphics mm -hmm. designer, um, and he worked in a company that was producing insulation, mm -hmm. and he did. Uh, product visualizations for them. Mm -hmm. So he said he's the master of uh, uh, insulation mm -hmm. uh, 3D uh, renders because that's all that he ever did. <laughs> like all types of wool, different structures, different densities, but nothing else. So, and Very it, narrow it, scope of yeah, it's, expertise. It, what, it, it kills your creativity yeah, at, sure. at, uh, uh, pretty soon, uh, I can imagine, but it also at some point starts to narrow your perspective because you you're unable to think out of the box because you're all the time you're in this one specific box, right? Yeah, and you're simply, uh, I don't know, maybe becoming lazy or this is uh, also, you can get burned out. You lose your motivation. Same, that's right. Yeah. Uh, by doing the same and the same type of work. So we have uh, cases where a company with internal capabilities to do R&D or product development might be overbooked. Mm -hmm might need a uh, fresh perspective mm -hmm. on some aspects of the products they're, they're um, delivering. Or lack designers, for instance. Or simply lack some uh, uh, specific skills within yes. uh, their, their team. teams. Yes. Um, uh, does this also uh, apply to R&D work? Yes, because uh, uh, Industrial Design Studio not only um, develops products, but we also do researches on, on uh, that's why it's called research, research and development. Yeah. And uh, this is also something which we uh, specialize in. And uh, some projects are just focused on that. So doing 
uh, research for our clients and delivering them uh, with um, some kind of reports, tests, possible te technical feasibility studies. So basically, we come up with uh, analysis on uh, whether something is possible to, to execute, what, what might be the, um, the general um, mm. cost of such project. And uh, this is something that we also do. Uh, but there are also uh, there were also projects with, which focused on um, solving a specific uh, problem uh, during a research, for instance, finding a technology feasible feasible for manufacturing a specific thing. Yeah, and um, that's also something uh, which we can handle, or even solve a mechanical uh, problem or construction problem. Uh, if the client requires such uh, assistance. Let's say I lack um, designers in my team. Mm -hmm. uh, I have engineers who are really good engineers, but they maybe lack the aesthetic sort of feel. Mm -hmm. um, uh, convince me why it's a good idea to like hire a team, mm -hmm. uh, a whole you know sort of studio, mm -hmm. uh, instead of going with a freelancer, mm -hmm. for example, with a, a, a single person who is also experience in its field so we, we, we've had many clients uh, who who used freelancers uh, for the aesthetic designs and uh, they end up with well not always but occasionally they end up with projects which are not possible to execute because uh, what uh, what a freelancer freelancer might lack uh, beyond of course his aesthetic skills if if he has any he or she uh, then uh, it's the expertise on actual manufacturing of the product or even the mechanical design or, or any other type of uh, uh, further stage of the project which, uh, which he's not likely to participate in. So mm -hmm. when you come to a design studio, um, you have some expectations that, uh, well, uh, we can handle not only just the 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 outlook of the of the of the product but also we know how to build the product and this is definitely something which we do and uh, that's why uh, when we show our designs to our clients this is something which we verify which we think how it's going to be built and uh, um, i would say that uh, handling uh, well uh, choosing a industrial design studio over a freelancer uh, is definitely a safer option uh, unless of course you're uh, considering the risk that you might end up with something well pretty looking but not uh, likely to be executed or very cost uh, let's say uh, mm -hmm. dangerous in terms of uh, um, in terms of bringing to to the market so um, definitely the wider scope of uh, of work that we do the wider scope of uh, talents that we have uh, and um, our insight uh, into the pro the whole process of uh, introducing a product to the market is is a big advantage over a freelance. Other than that, uh, we can overview uh, the full process, the full project, um, if our client lacks uh, such skills. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you can come up, you can come to us and. Uh, expect that we are going to deliver a finished product which is something which is manufactured which is prototyped whatever whatever your wishes are in this regards but we can handle the whole process and we can manage this process as well so uh, this is something which definitely can help out uh, clients who have totally no experience uh, over managing such uh, such types of projects mm -hmm. i imagine uh you were a freelancer once. Mm -hmm. to, I mean, probably you started uh, uh, freelancing. So, um, does all the things you say now uh, sort of apply to you in your, the younger years of your career? Uh, hmm, that's a hard question because my freelance, uh, uh, mm, let's say, age considered a different branch of creative work. Okay. Uh, rather than industrial design. Uh, by the time I became industrial designer, I, I was already hired uh, by, uh, by a company. So that's, uh, that was uh, obviously something different, but uh, definitely 
uh, I, I, I always, uh, um, when the company was still um, being a, a two-person company, we always wanted to deliver our clients more than other uh, small or uh, single-person studios. And we always um, wanted to ascertain them that uh, the projects that they receive from us will be possible to execute. And I think that was um, a big advantage over uh, a typical freelancer who, who just um, came up with, let's say, beautiful pictures, uh, which had no, uh, well, no basis in reality in terms of how it's made. So, like, y y you yourself sort of um, uh, felt the need to make your designs more manufacturable? Yes, more possible, more uh, realistic in terms of uh, actual um, manufacturing processes. And uh, I would say this is a big advantage over uh, something which uh, cannot be uh, executed or simply um, if a designer has no experience in, in manufacturing and uh, delivers a product which is totally unrealistic uh, or, mm, well, technically not possible to, to do. We, I do remember uh, certain projects that we received from, from our, our clients. They came up to us with, uh, well, uh, attractive conceptual models and upon uh, analyzing them, it turned out that one project that I have in mind was, I think, had 15 parts, I think, and out of those 15 separate parts, only one was manufacturable. So, okay. So that basically gave us a pretty good idea what has to be done and we had to, well... That, that means a total overhaul, a total yes. re redesign. We, we did our best to keep the original outlook on, okay. on, on how the project looked. But, uh, but definitely there were changes were needed and um, that was not an easy task. Yeah, so coming back to managing client, mm -hmm. clients' expectations, mm -hmm. uh, you said that, for example, you, a client came to you with a, a design which turned out to be impossible, to, ma yeah. uh, impossible mm -hmm. to manufacture. Mm -hmm. So you basically needed to redes redesign it. I'm mm -hmm. sure it changed the design in general, mm -hmm. however hard you tried to keep it. Yes. Um, but I assume that a client might come in and expect a uh, like guaranteed result. Like they come to you with this piece of paper and there's a design on it, or maybe mm -hmm. it's just a sketch they did, you know, mm -hmm. while eating dinner, dinner or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they say, it's supposed to be this and look like this. Mm -hmm. So uh, how do you manage such expectations? Is it possible? <laughs> if it's a realistic project, then yeah, it's possible. But uh, if it's something totally, uh, I don't know, totally unrealistic, and we had such clients, of course, then we simply need to tell them that, guys, this is, uh, we can do something similar, but not exactly something which is going to look like this, because uh, uh, there is no Currently, there is no technology which would allow us to, to, for instance, do something like that. Or you can just uh, make a 3D print, which basically uh, uh, can, uh, well, a 3D printer can handle almost everything. So, but it's not, uh, if you plan for a mass production, then it's definitely, uh, well, there are different uh, requirements for, for such uh, yeah. project, for such uh, uh, 3D model and, uh, well, uh, sometimes our clients need to be aware that, uh, well, compromises will be necessary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's, I guess that's the nature of R&D work, right? Yes, but not always, because some uh, sometimes R&D, uh, for instance, the research phase is um, not always successful. For, uh, so our clients do have some expectations. Um, let me give you an example because I think it's uh, it's going to be the easiest way to illustrate. We we did have a, a research project which uh, uh, required from us um, finding a specific technology uh, for doing uh, a medical um, device mm -hmm. uh, placed inside a human body. 
And uh, the issue was that uh, our clients wanted to do actual testing on live subjects, okay. uh, medical tests, uh, but they needed to find a technology which, which would allow them prototyping the, the devices and uh, also a technology which could be used uh, on later stages for actual manufacturing, um, definitely a larger series of those, um, uh, those devices. And uh, we took on this challenge because uh, we thought this is going to be... Uh, we knew the limitations of current prototyping technology, and, uh, but of course we didn't know the actual uh, state of the technology uh, around uh, the areas related to, to medical, let's say, grade materials. And uh, it took us six months uh, to actually analyze the market, to, to, inquir to, well, to send inquiries to different vendors, manufacturers, uh, to find out about possible technologies and even uh, try to uh, get some samples of materials. Uh, but we did say to our client in the beginning that they have to prepare that this project might actually end without any uh, possible solutions because yeah. uh, it might be that um, it might turn out that there is currently no technology uh, available which would um, have a necessary, for instance, uh, certifications for the materials, which uh, for, so maybe there won't be any materials which would be mechanically uh, compatible with our uh, needs for this device. So they were. Uh, we made sure that they are aware that such process might end uh, with, um, without, let's say, success or without any, um, uh, without any specific uh, guides for them what to do next. And of course, uh, they knew that um, they have to take this into account. Thankfully, we ended up with uh, very specific. Uh, ideas and um, points that our client uh, uh, could use and uh, I would say they continued work on uh, working on their own but with uh, with our uh, findings on, on this specific subject so um, um, I assume that if someone uh, this is in the case of a, a company or a person who does not have um, R&D or in industrial design capabilities mm -hmm. uh, internally, but uh, it's important to understand that for such a person that the R&D process mm -hmm. or even probably the design process mm -hmm. is not something that guarantees a result they yes. have imagined. So sometimes you just, you can verify that something is not possible to do. Mm -hmm. And that's also a positive result of a... yes. Uh, of an R&D process. Or I would add that maybe um, sometimes it is possible, but finding the right way or um, uh, exploring different uh, ways just to find the, 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 the one good one to, to, to solve a specific problem is, uh, is a time-consuming process. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, if you have to design something which is um, Imagine a mechanical uh, product and you have to solve a problem of, I don't know, transporting something from one place to another. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really uh, not that easy. And uh, well, if someone made it before and it can be analyzed, then it's really just, uh, just an issue on actually analyzing how it's made and uh, executing mm -hmm. a similar, uh, let's say, mechanism. But if this is something completely new, uh, which uh, which sometimes happens to us, or because we cannot copy uh, a different solution available in the market, because there might may be patterns yeah. uh, re to registering come, you this, need to come up with a new one. That's right. We need to come up with a new solution to to solve something. Then this is a very challenging process because we we come uh, we come up with different ideas, and those ideas have to be verified. And of course. The verification process is not that easy because not only have to you have to imagine um, how this device is going to work, you have to make some assumptions, uh, you have to make some calculations, make actual design and execute a prototype, analyze it, and maybe uh, it turns out that it doesn't work, and you yeah. have to rethink the whole process, go back to the let's say drawing board and uh, start again. Uh, often from, from the scratch. And uh, 
yeah, some clients need to be aware that, um, especially when they come to us with uh, challenging projects, with projects with um, mechanical challenges or constructional um, puzzles that have mm -hmm. to be addressed, then this is something that they need to be aware that such, that actually design uh, is exploring different ways on uh, how not to do yeah. uh, things and uh, finding the one way uh, based on experiments, reviews and, um, well, uh, logical uh, thinking. When uh, someone is faced with, uh, I don't know, uh, the situation that either they have no idea how to introduce a new product to the market mm -hmm. or they have an idea and they even have uh, a team for that, but mm -hmm. they're overbooked or uh, maybe too specialized in some niche uh, uh, element of mm -hmm. the whole product uh, and they decide they need to reach out to an outside company, to an uh, industrial design studio like ours, mm -hmm. uh, how can they prepare for that? What should they bring to the table for the first conversation mm -hmm. when they approach uh, a company like ours? So. They should bring as as much information as as they can because uh, the more the more the better input uh, on their side is, uh, then the better understanding we have on actual product, on actual scope, and actual uh, problem to solve. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't like. Uh, I I always uh, say that uh, designing is not guessing work, and mm -hmm. uh, this is something that we also try to uh, tell our clients. Uh, that we are not uh, fortune tellers. We do not have a um, magic a, magic a ball, glass ball, yeah. a glass ball to, to to see the future and to design something that uh, it, that's based on their idea in the heads. They have to be able to transfer the idea um, to to paper to transfer uh, to us uh, vo uh, vocally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, we analyze. We ask them questions. We uh, we brainstorm, uh, we sometimes challenge their ideas because they seem to be um, too overly complex or uh, not specific enough. And uh, only then, uh, when we have uh, a very good understanding on what actually has to be designed, on uh, what has to be done, then we engage the, um, the actual designing process on our end. So if a client comes to us, mm -hmm. um, Ideally, they would have to have a, a brief prepared, mm -hmm. uh, a specification of the project, which uh, leaves no questions uh, okay. for us. And uh, that's, like I would say, a perfect case. Yeah, but come on, I, I, that's, that's what I want to say. Yeah. I think that's impossible, right? To leave no questions. Yeah, there are always <laughs> questions and that's our, uh, that's basically our job to ask those questions, to yeah. ask them as long as we, uh, as we get the final answer. So what, I, I, I imagine a client should know, uh, except for the general idea of the product, they should be able to specifically describe the functions yes. or maybe the, the look mm -hmm. or dimensions, Yes. maybe uh, materials. Imagine, I, I would sum this up in, uh, in one simple sentence. Yeah. Imagine that you describe your product to a person who never saw a similar device, mm -hmm. who never touched a similar device, and based on your description, this person has to imagine uh, how it will work, how it will function, and what it might look like. Okay, so if I wanted a new phone, yeah. I shouldn't tell you, okay, so what I need is a new phone that does this and that. Mm -hmm. I should describe basically a phone with mm -hmm. the functions that, that I want to introduce. Yes, that's right. Uh, of course, uh, references are most welcome. Uh, if you can, if a similar product exists to the one that you are trying to design, then of course we would like to see this because we will also do a market research uh, for similar constructions or, or similar types of devices, if there are any. Uh, but uh, but if you have uh, references of your own, uh, if you did market research uh, or competition research, yeah. then this is something, a very valuable input for us as well, because we can analyze it. We can uh, maybe see potential problems or dangers if, uh, if you want to copy a solution which is uh, already in the market because someone might have patented it. And uh, it's always good to tell us as, as much uh, information as you can. 
and sometimes our clients um, um, say that or they ask us whether this will influence the process, whether we will not be biased by their ideas or by their suggestions. I say no, uh, just give us this information because it might turn out to be a very valuable information. Don't keep it to yourself, uh, give, give it to us. Uh, we are not copycats to, to mindlessly copy something to, and apply it to, to a new product. This is not how a design studio works. And, uh, and of course, every piece of information is, uh, is welcome. And uh, if, if, if they don't want to share it with us, for a good reason, then of course, uh, we also need to know this um, because it might help us in the process. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I decide that I need help with a project mm -hmm. uh, before emailing or calling to an industrial design studio, I should do my homework mm -hmm. and make sure I know what I expect, mm -hmm. what the, uh, the, the product's uh, functions will be. Mm -hmm maybe how much I want it to cost on the shelf or how much I want it yes. to cost in production, mm -hmm. uh, when I want it, I need it to be ready, mm -hmm. um, what's the, I don't know, more or less shape or maybe what materials I want to use, mm -hmm. as much detail as possible, but whilst being aware that these might change in the development process. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, I think that would sum up basically uh, mm -hmm. our discussion. Uh, I think we fairly got through everything we should. I'm not sure we skipped anything. I mean, from my notes, I see that I think we got everything. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for, the, for your time. Thanks for the talk. Thank you. And see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.